Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a mid-year review on the Hobonichi. So this will be the first year I've ever done anything with the Hobonichi. And it is now June. So I wanted to kind of give you my thoughts on the Hobonichi, whether I like it, whether I don't like it, the pros, the cons, in a bunch of different areas. So that way, if you're interested in getting the, Ho the Hobonichi uh, for 2024, or if you're contemplating getting the Hobonichi Cousin Avec, which is a half year planner, uh, I wanted to kind of give you my, my thoughts and reviews and what I have found from using the Hobonichi for about six months. So if you'd be interested to see kind of or hear about what I think about the Hobonichi and some of the pros and cons of having it, then go ahead and keep watching. So the first planner I want to talk about is my Hobonichi Cousin because that's been my main planner for 2023. So we're going to go ahead and just put my Hobonichi Weeks to the side. This is the Hobonichi Cousin. I have went ahead and printed out some pictures to put on my cousin just to kind of give it a little bit of decoration. So I wanted to quickly go over the size, the spread, the paper, the price and the different kind of options that the Hobonichi Cousin has and kind of give you my uh, the pros the cons and my overall thoughts for all of those categories the first thing I want to talk about is the size so this is an a5 size which for me it's perfect it's like the perfect size for what I need it's not one of those over those really big planners that are like the eight and a half by 11, the full size paper planners, which is too much for me. I find the A5 is a perfect size for what I need. However, it could also be a con for some people because it might be too big for people. And the A6, which is a smaller Hobonichi cousin, does not come with the weekly spreads. So you're kind of it's a give and take if you want to have a weekly spread, but the A5 is too big, then you're kind of, you know, you might have to do some maneuvering on what you need to do. Size wise, I give it two thumbs up. I think the this is definitely the size that works the best for me, but I can see how it could be a con for other people. So the other big thing that I appreciate about the Hobonichi Cousin is it is basically an all-in-one book. So it is a page a day book, but it has a yearly section, which I use for um, like habit tracking, but it has a yearly section. So you can do your like year at a glance. It has monthly sections, which if you're a monthly planner, it has those for you. It has weekly sections. So if you're more of a, you wanna plan your week out and you wanna have a vertical column for your weeks, it has that. And then it also has a daily, it's a one a day. So you have a page for each day. So you can use this for journaling, for pictures, for whatever the case may be. This is an all-in-one planner. So you don't need to have a monthly planner for just documenting your monthly plans. You don't have to have a separate journal just for your journaling. Like this is an all-in-one, in my mind, a huge, 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 huge pro is you need one book that should be able to satisfy all of your planning needs. On the other end of the spectrum, it could be a con specifically for the daily pages. So this is, like I said, an A5 size and having this much space could be a negative for those who don't need a full page, this size full page in a daily. So it, people might have stress trying to fill out this full page or feel like they have to fill out this full page on this book. In addition, because this is an all-in-one, it could potentially be a waste of space for people who only need the monthly and the weekly. If you're not someone who doesn't need daily pages, then you have half a book that you don't need. That's a waste of space and it just adds more bulk to your planner. One of the other big negatives that I have seen that I'm, I'm curious to see how it's going to go for the rest of the year is because this is an all-in-one, it is, you know, the monthly, the daily, the weekly, everything. It can get bulky. This is only June and you can tell the pages that I've already filled out 
and then all the pages that still need to be filled out. So at the end of the year, this could get very bulky. So that is a negative for somebody who might not want to have a planner that is so chunky at the end of the year. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is probably one of the things the cousin is most known for and that is the paper. So this uses the Tamoy River paper and it is great for fountain pens and you can do watercolors. Um, it's, it's just a, a great overall paper that does not have bleed through. So you can use your watercolor and you won't have, you know, like if you do it on a, a regular A5 or A6 bullet journal, then you could have a lot of like the, the water will soak through the paper. Whereas in this paper, it does not do that. So you can use watercolor and you can use fountain pens to really see like the sheen and the, the different aspects to fountain pen inks work really well with this paper. So that's a huge positive if you were one of those people that use fountain pens or watercolor or other kind of like mediums. So on the con, this is my biggest gripe, is while this paper is nice, it feels nice, it like, the, the sound of the paper is so nice. The negative that I have with this entire book, the number one thing that sticks out is it smears. So I am a huge pen fanatic. I love pens, I have a ton of pens, but I can't use 90% of my pens because they're gel and they will smear. So I have gone through a lot of new pens to try to find ones that work to where if I run my finger across my paper, I'm not gonna have a ton of smudges. So a lot of my past spreads that I did, I had to strategically put uh, stickers down, like for instance, on this, Let's see if you can see. So on here, like I have a lot of smearing or smudging from here because the fountain pen that I was actually using for this spread was not a good fountain pen um, that would not smear. So a lot of my spreads that I ended up doing at the beginning of the year, I had to kind of figure out what pens worked. So I now pretty much stuck to two to three main pens and that's it. Like my entire stash of pens, I pretty much can't use. So that is a huge con for me. If you are a fountain pen fanatic and you love fountain pen and fountain pen ink, then this might be pro for you is this paper. If you are a gel ink person, then that might not be something that you would be interested in having to deal with. So the next thing I wanna talk about with the Hobonichi Cousin is the price. So I bought this year, I bought this off of Amazon and it was $60. And for some, that is very expensive for a planner. And I would agree with you. So I've always only used planners that I found at like Target or Walmart or those like retail stores, those typical planners that you would have. But those were typically just monthly and weekly planners, not daily planners, but they were substantially cheaper than what the Hobonichi Cousin is. So that is a huge con for price wise. However, if you end up buying the Hobonichi through the Hobonichi website, you could potentially have, it might be cheaper, or you might be able to offset the expensiveness of this if you buy more in one shipment. So for example, if I just bought this planner from Hobonichi, it would be $30 US dollars, and then you would have like $30 of shipping, which would equal $60, which is what Amazon bought, or what I bought for Amazon. However, if I bought this planner, which would be 20 or $30 on Hobonichi's website. If I bought my Hobonichi Weeks, which I can't remember what it was on the Hobonichi website, and I bought this planner on the Hobonichi website and other pens or stickers or washi or whatever, all in that one shipment from Hobonichi, then the shipment cost would still be $30. So you would actually be kind of saving money if you buy in bulk because you wouldn't have to worry about, you know, $30 in shipping on this. And then if you buy on Amazon, you have the built-in shipping cost on this. And then if you buy this, you have the built-in shipping cost on this. So, you know, it could potentially be cheaper or you'd be able to offset some of those, those costs if you bought in bulk, which is what I plan on doing 
this coming year. So instead of buying this on Amazon for $60, I'm going to pay that $60 to Hobonichi and at the same time, I'll end up buying other stuff from Hobonichi, which would hopefully offset some of that shipping cost that was already built into the price on Amazon. Hopefully that makes sense. I couldn't, I, I, I didn't know how to clearly explain it. So hopefully that makes sense. So this I think is a pro, the price is a pro and a con, but there's a way to mitigate it um, if, you know, that was something that you chose to do. And then the last thing with the Hobonichi Cousin that I have found, again, I've only used this planner for six months, so I don't have a lot of experience with this, but these are just some of the things that I have found on like my thoughts as I've been using this is one of the other pros for the Hobonichi Cousin is you get this full year book, which is what I have. This is all of 2023, but they also do sell the Hobonichi Cousin Avec, which is six months. So you can have January to June and then July to December. So you have that option of not having this much bulk because you have half, you know, this would be half a year if you got the Avec. So you would save on the bulk. And then the other pro that I can see of if you wanted to go the Avec route and only have like have two six month cousins is if for some reason you were doing your spreads specifically for fountain pen users. I've seen this on a couple of like Instagram posts and things is if you're a fountain pen user and you accidentally sp spill your ink or your pen gets huge splotches of ink everywhere and you are, or you're somehow you spilled coffee on your planner. If it was a full year planner, then you would basically be like, oh, I gotta try to recreate, you know, potentially months and months and months of your spreads if you bought a new year planner or there's the option of you know i spilt coffee the you know this week of june and you know now i'm so upset and disappointed that my spread is just destroyed and my paper got ripped or whatever the case may be you can get the event in for july through december you have a brand new journal so it could potentially help you from any kind of heartache or discomfort you have if for some reason your planner does not look like you wanted it to look. So if, you know, my dog got a hold of this book and ripped half the pages out, then maybe I'll keep this with what I have and then just get the Avec for the the rest of the year. So there there are options that could that you could use to help um, not have to have a brand new full year planner. You would only need to have a half a year planner. And honestly, I don't see that as a con. I don't see any cons of having that option available. So I only see pros in that instance. So those were kind of my five main thoughts that I have whenever I was thinking about the Hobonichi cousin. And out of those five things, the size, the various spreads, the paper, price, and then having the different options, the, the full year or the half a year option, all of them are, are pros to me. I don't see any of those being major issues that would stop me from using the cousin. The only negative that I have that I've said many, many times through any of my plan with me's, any of my overall thoughts on the Hobonichi Cousin is while the paper is amazing, I'm not a fountain pen user. I am more of a gel ink pen user. And a lot of my pens I have to sit aside and never use again, except for like work pens because they don't do well on this paper. So that is my only con. Overall, I absolutely love this cousin. I plan on getting the 2024 cousin. I don't know if I'm going to get the 2024 full year or if I want to get the half a year. It kind of depends on how bulky this gets, but I'm thinking I'm probably going to stay at the full year because I like the thought of just having one book to look at or refer back to if I want. I don't want to have to try to flip through multiple books to try to see if there was something in particular I was looking up. So I'm thinking I'm going to get the full year, but I like having the option of having the multiple years. So that is everything with the cousin. Now we're going to move on to the weeks. And this is the only other product of Hobonichi's that I have. I know there are other products that Hobonichi has on their website. I just have never used them. So I'm only going to focus on the cousin and then the Hobonichi weeks. So we're going to put this to the side and we're going to bring out my two weeks. So I have the standard weeks and then I have the mega weeks. So the four things we're going to talk about here, a lot of them I've already covered. So they have the, the size, 
the spreads, the paper again, and then the price. So we'll talk about the size. The size I think is perfect. So I use my Hobonichi Weeks. This is my primary Hobonichi Weeks. This size is perfect for me. This is a portable. It's perfect to throw in your purse or your book bag. It's not very thick. As you can see, I've used this for half a year and you know, it's definitely not very bulky. So this is my everyday carry. This is what I use to put in my purse that I can, you know, use the note pages that are in the back, which we'll talk about in a minute. I use the note pages for any kind of um, appointments or any kind of thoughts or comments that I have that I want to remember. I use that. And this is just my all-in-one. I just throw it in my bag anytime I leave the house and I have it. So size wise, I can't remember exactly what size it is, but comparing the Hobonichi Cousin to the Weeks, it's slightly shorter and a substantial amount of width smaller. So you can kind of see what it looks like. I don't remember, like I said, what the actual size is of this. So this is perfect for me. I don't have any cons for the size of this Hobonichi Weeks. The next point I wanted to talk about with the, the Weeks is the spreads. So with the Weeks, it comes with the yearly spread, just like the Hobonichi Cousin did. It has the monthly spread, just like the Hobonichi Cousin. The weekly spread is a little bit different. It is, instead of it being a vertical layout, it is a horizontal layout. That could be something that you might like or might dislike. And then it does not have any dailies. So if you wanted to have a daily spread or wanted to have something broken out that's more than what's already given on the weeklies, then you could use that in your notes pages. Within the notes pages, the weeks, the standard weeks, you get 70 notes pages. You have 75. So there's a total of 75 note pages in the standard weeks. And then in the mega, you have 219, I believe. 219 pages, note pages in the mega. So if you are someone who wants to have a lot of daily pages readily available, or you want to use this as a bullet journal, as well as a planner, then maybe the weeks is what you need. Um, just that way you have the extra pages. Or if you do not need your daily pages or need to have a lot of space in your notes, then the Hobonichi Weeks standard might be something that you'd be interested in. So for the spreads, um, the pro is it is still an all-in-one book. It just does not have the dedicated daily pages, but it could also be a con for those people who want to have those dedicated daily pages or they need potentially more pages than what Mega provides in the notes pages. So the next point is the Tamoy River paper. Again, this uses the same paper as the Hobonichi Cousin, so same thoughts as what I had for the cousin. Great for fountain pens or watercolor, but if you're a gel ink person, then maybe this is not going to be something that you will like because it will smear very easily. And then the last point with the Hobonichi Weeks is the price. So I bought both of my Hobonichi Weeks on Amazon and the prices were, they varied. They started at $25. So this one I believe is 25. The Mega I think I ended up getting for 30. And so the one of the other big positives is if you're going the Hobonichi Weeks route is there are a ton of covers and colors available in the Hobonichi Weeks. The Hobonichi Cousin only comes in like this yellow color for the cover. That's it. So if you want any kind of decoration for your cousin, you have to print out something, you have to get a separate like cover to go on top of this um, to decorate it. It does not come with any actual covers already included. The Hobonichi Weeks has a ton of colors and covers, so you could get the, the Mega in a purple or a yellow or a blue. They have all sorts of diff actual designs for the Weeks. So their prices for the Weeks ranges based on what color or design or the standard versus the mega. There's a lot of variation 
with the Hobonichi Weeks, which is a huge positive. So you're not stuck with only having one color. You can you can pretty much find a Hobonichi Week that will suit your aesthetic or your um, color palette that you prefer. So the con for that again is the price. is It's just depending on whether you find $25 and up to be beneficial for you or um, within your budget for a planner. Again, this is all just for planning. So if you're on a budget or if you have financial responsibilities, this might still be too expensive for you. But if not, then you have $25 and you could potentially get an all-in-one just about planner that's very portable and uh, is a great little thing to throw in your purse or your book bag whenever you're going out of the house or to school or to work. It's, it's a great option for you. So that is my overall thoughts on the Hobonichi Weeks and the Hobonichi Cousin. So my standing on the Hobonichi at this point going into 2024, I'm definitely going to be getting a cousin because I love the cousin. I, I love the all-in-one aspect of having this one planner to document my entire life plus journaling. And then for my like everyday carry, I'm probably just going to go back to the Hobonichi Weeks, the standard. I bought the Mega originally because I thought I would use this for work that I could, you know, document and have all of my um, work notes, my meetings. I would use all of these notes in the back for additional notes for my, my job, but it's, I got tired of having to flip between my notes that I had on the actual page for the week and then having to flip to the very back to get more notes. I, it just didn't, it didn't work out. So this is going to be like my junk, you know, if a pen works or testing out ink, or whatever the case may be. This is kind of like my junk, junk planner that I keep at my desk. So I'm not gonna be getting a mega this coming year. I'm only gonna be doing the Hobonichi Week standard. And I'm probably gonna be doing something kind of decorative maybe this next year instead of this black and white. I think I might be trying something different. So these will definitely be a buy. I will also be buying from the Hobonichi website instead of from Amazon, um, just so that way I can try to save on some shipping, get some extra stuff from Hobonichi. And then also if, as another tip, if you end up buying from Hobonichi, you'll get like a free bag. It's like a, I mean, like a book bag or something, not a book bag, not like a book bag that you throw over your shoulder, but like a, a bag that you can put your cousin in, um, sack, whatever you want to call it. I don't know, but you get that in addition to, I've heard and seen where you get a free ballpoint multi-pen that Hobonichi will give you. It's their preferred pen for the Hobonichi paper. So you'll get that as well. So there's benefit of buying it straight from Hobonichi than trying to get it off of Amazon or other, um, like a third party seller. So that is all that I have. Those are my overall thoughts, my pros, the cons, my overall thoughts on the size, spreads, paper, price, um, and all the things that kind of go along with having a Hobonichi. So I want to thank everybody who has watched please make sure you like and subscribe if you have not done so already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.